Hello, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another Quick Bite, Living the Word. Uh, first of all, I want to say tonight to you guys, just want you all to know how much I love you. I think about many of you so often, and I uh, just want you to know how much you mean to me. And, uh, and I don't say that lightly. I hope that you know how much I love you. Um, but I say all that to say this. The text I'm going to go into tonight is going to be, I don't know what the right word is. Um, it's going to be a little bit cutting uh, to our flesh a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, because it's going to really bring about what you might actually think and or believe. You know, I've often said when it comes to walking with the Lord, there's that question. Do you believe that what you believe is real? And if you really believe it, then why aren't you living it? Now, I'm not going to go to James chapter 1, or not James chapter 1, excuse me. I'm not going to go to the book of James to talk to us about being doers of the world, word and not hearers only. More particularly, what I want to talk to you about is the idea of do you understand what it is you actually believe? Uh, our text today is going to come from 2 Peter chapter 2, and I want us to pick it up at verse 16 to begin with. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, and I just want to read, and we're going to kind of take breaks throughout this as we discuss this together. So, in Second Peter chapter uh, two, verse one, uh, cha chapter Second uh, Peter one, verse sixteen. There we go. Let's try that in English. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it says, "For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His Majesty." Now, why I start with this text tonight is this, because I think sometimes in our walk with Jesus Christ, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Sorry, I think sometimes in our walk with Jesus Christ that we forget that we are not fo following just this story, just this book that just, you know, it's just been around forever. These are not devised fables. These are truths. I mean, from the very beginning of the foundation of the, uh, of the word in Genesis chapter one, where it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So many of us have grown up and heard time and time again. It's the Big Bang Theory, which, by the way, is unraveling right now. The scientists are having the hardest time figuring this out. But the Big Bang Theory and stuff like this. But ultimately, you know, here's the thing. We know how it all began. And as a matter of fact, even with everything that science tries to come up with, the only thing that makes sense when they actually break it down is exactly what God said. We haven't followed cunning devised fables. But many of us act like this book is just a suggestion. This book is just something that is just, oh, it's a good guidance for your life, but it's not necessarily the important thing that it really is. We haven't followed cunning devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love how the apostle puts that because Peter here is telling us, listen, we follow the power and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know those things are coming. And we're eyewitnesses to that. And you and I, by the way, are eyewitnesses to the power of the Lord as well. But oftentimes we want to ignore it, act like we haven't seen it, or perhaps even try to describe it to some sort of natural uh, thing that has happened. But he says in verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from, out, came from heaven we heard when we were with him on the holy, in the holy mount. We have also, now listen to this. This is so cool, guys. Ready for this? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So now think about this. Peter, who heard the voice of God while on the mount with Jesus Christ, say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, now says, hey, that's pretty cool. But you know what I have that's even bigger than that? I have the more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So this is what he's really saying to us. He's saying, listen, we have that sure word of prophecy. It's even better than all these quote unquote, um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, exciting supernatural things, you know. Well, so many people nowadays are getting wrapped up in the, well, the feelings and the emotions. And I know because I had this emotion. You have more than that. You have more just than the emotions of Jesus Christ. You have the word of prophecy. You have his word written that you can read it and understand it and learn of it. Because this is so important for us in the church right now is if we just recognize who we believe in and what we believe. So let, I guess the question I'm kind of getting at tonight is this, is do you believe the word of God? Or do you only believe it's just there to be as a suggestion, as a, a guidance or whatever? Or do you believe it to be actually the word of God, the truth of God? Because if you believe it to be so, and I pray you do, and I hope that most of you watching this and listening to this do, and I actually know many of you who are, and I think you do. But the point of the matter is, if you believe that, 
then we're going to be doers of that word. We're going to trust in that word. We're going to depend in that word. And we're going to have our hope found in that word. Not hope found in the things of this life. Not hope found in, in our government. Not hope found in the times in which we live. Not our hope found in anything else but Jesus Christ and him alone. But then he goes on to make this point even clearer. He says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So here's the deal. When you recognize what it is that you're actually looking at, you're looking at something that was written by God for you. So what is it that you're coming up against, the questions you're having in your life right now? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the answer is there. You may not like the answer. And a lot of times when we come up against our flesh, we don't like the answer the Lord has for it. But the truth of the matter is the answer for those questions in life are there. We just need to be willing to trust Him. And then when we run into them and God reveals them to us, are we going to make those our guidance or are we going to make ourselves our guidance? Because honestly... The one thing that is sure is not the feelings and the emotions. It's the word of God. As a matter of fact, so important was it that Christ himself said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never fail. That is so amazing. So I hope you take time today to recognize the importance of that's the, the word of God that you have available to you. And that you search it out. Find the things that you need from it. And let it be that lamp unto your feet. Because it is that, as he says here, right? He says it can be that light that shines in the dark places. So those things that we don't want illuminated or the things we need to get illuminated so we can deal with them. The word of God can do that. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.